I am both honored and humbled to receive the 2021 Kyoto Prize in Basic Science. It is especially pleasing in view of the ideals and philosophy of the Inamori Foundation, and I graciously thank all those associated with the Foundation. I will now describe several major discoveries over 50 years of biological research, as well as some personal background. It is often stated that we are our genes, but perhaps more accurately, we are the products of our genes. The central dogma states that DNA is transcribed into RNA copies that are then translated into proteins with various enzymatic, structural, and regulatory properties. Remarkably, embryonic stem cells can give rise to different cell types with the same set of genes. Related, the normal formation and function of different cell types and many associated pathologies result from differential gene expression, which is controlled primarily at the level of transcription, the first step in gene expression. This makes it critical to understand the mechanisms that regulate transcription, and this has been my major objective and passion for 50 years. The transcription is carried out by an enzyme called RNA polymerase, and the next slide uh, shows transcription in, perco in prokaryotes as a frame of reference for the eukaryotic transcription that I will describe. In essence, the DNA is transcribed by a single RNA polymerase, it is regulated by interacting gene-specific activators. As is true in eukaryotes as well, transcription begins at a specific site and makes RNA single-stranded RNA copies of the template strand of the DNA. As a preview, my major discoveries include RNA polymerases 1, 2, 3, their distinct structures and functions, cognate general initiation factors, the prototype gene-specific transcriptional activator, general and gene-specific co-activators, causal roles for chromosomal histone modifications in transcription, and biochemically defined cell-free systems that accurately transcribe specific genes. Before discussing these in more detail, a little personal background. I was born and raised on a farm in southern Indiana. My parents had very limited formal educations, but were caring parents who taught their four children to be honest, humble, and diligent. And although diligence in school studies was expected, education beyond high school was not considered, and I was expected to remain on the family farm. This is a 1946 family photo on a Sunday afternoon outing. Note my older brother and I in the lower left in overalls typically worn by farm boys. This shows me learning to drive a tractor in anticipation of future farm work. As a child, I had little exposure to science per se, but enjoyed trying to figure out how small mechanical devices worked, as well as building some various small devices, such as crystal radios. In high school, I was especially interested in mathematics and chemistry, but had little time for extracurricular activities because of extensive farm chores. Fortunately, with a strong academic background, I received a full tuition scholarship to attend Wabash College, a small liberal arts college with strong science departments. Although I had a primary interest in chemistry, I also became intrigued by biochemistry and the emerging molecular biology during a course taught by a new assistant professor, Tom Cole, from Caltech. I was especially influenced by the classic 1961 Jacques Monod paper on gene regulation in bacteria, leading me to think about future studies on gene regulation in animal cells. These interests led me to a graduate program in biochemistry at the University of Illinois. At Illinois, I joined the laboratory of Bill Rutter, an inspiring mentor working on aldolase enzymes and pancreas development, albeit not transcription. Fortunately, he allowed me to initiate studies on transcription, which began after the laboratory moved to the University of Washington in Seattle in 1965. At that time, virtually nothing was known about gene regulation in animal cells, except that, as in bacteria, 
There were three major classes of RNA, messenger, ribosomal, and transfer. My initial studies focused on quantitative measurements of RNA synthesis in isolated nuclei and in cells during hormonal responses in rat liver and in sea urchin development. However, it was not yet possible to monitor specific gene products in those pre-cloning days. Therefore, I decided to go to the heart of the transcription problem and to first identify the enzyme that transcribes DNA. As detailed later, this led to my discovery of RNA polymerases 1, 2, 3. This was a true eureka moment in my career and also guaranteed a noteworthy thesis. For postdoctoral studies, I joined the laboratory of Don Brown, another inspiring mentor who had purified the large ribosomal RNA genes that I suspected were transcribed by Paul I because of co-localization in the nucleolus. Surprisingly, I failed to see specific transcription of these genes by purified Paul I, which led me to suspect that eukaryotic transcription would be more complicated than imagined and set the stage for subsequent studies in my own laboratory at Washington University. Returning to my graduate work and regarding the identification of the eukaryotic RNA polymerases, in 1959-60, Sam Weiss showed NTP-dependent RNA synthesis both in isolated nuclei and in a derived chromatin aggregate. In 64 to 69, several labs reported only a single chromatographic peak of RNA polymerase activity, suggestive of a single enzyme, but had employed low salt, low yield extraction procedures. In 68 to 69, in the Rudder Laboratory, I realized that unlike the bacterial situation, most RNA polymerase in eukaryotic cells was chromatin bound, that is engaged, and systematically developed new extraction and purification procedures that included high salt sonication to dissociate the histone DNA and polymerase DNA RNA complexes, dialysis to low salt to precipitate DNA histone, leaving quantitatively solubilized RNA polymerase. And finally, ion exchange chromatography to resolve PALS 1, 2, 3. This shows my laboratory notebooks and my thesis with volume 12 containing the original description and characterization of PALS 1, 2, and 3. This shows me collecting sea urchins, the organism in which PALS 1, 2, and 3 were first discovered. This shows a chromatographic resolution of the three nuclear RNA polymerases in February of 1969, with the red lines showing the three different RNA polymerases that were chromatographically eluded. This work resulted in my first publication, a Nature article, but of note, the paper was submitted to Nature in August 5, 1969, and initially rejected on the grounds that it was not of general interest. Not a particularly happy moment for uh, a graduate student, but happily, it was published in October 18th of that year as originally submitted. The identification of the distinct RNA polymerases in 1969 was foundational, but as it turns out, and as you will see, just the tip of the iceberg. As discussed in my 2003 Lasker Award commentary entitled The Eukaryotic Transcriptional Machinery, Complexities and Mechanisms Unforeseen, Having three enzymes, the next task was to identify their specific functions. The early functional assignments were based on comparisons of the differential sensitivities of the purified polymerases to the mushroom toxin alpha amanitin with the sensitivities of the synthesis of specific RNAs by endogenous, engaged, polymerases in isolated nuclei. As you can see in the diagram on the right, the sensitivity of messenger RNA synthesis matched that of PAL2, the sensitivity of 5S and tRNA synthesis matched that of PAL3, 
and the insensitivity of ribosomal RNA synthesis matched that of POL1. So these studies led us to the following situation, namely that RNA polymerases 1, 2, and 3 transcribe respectively the genes encoding ribosomal RNA, messenger RNA, and 5S and tRNA. And these RNAs converge on the ribosome for protein synthesis. This scenario is distinct, is distinct from that in prokaryotes, which have one enzyme for all classes of RNA. And it provides a convenient means for independent regulation of the global synthesis of the major classes of RNA, for example, during growth state changes. Given these important findings, the next question was to assess the structural basis for the distinct RNA polymerase functions. By 1974, my students and I had purified to homogeneity the RNA polymerases from mouse tumor cells and resolved them by electrophoresis as shown in the panel on the left. As you can see, the three enzymes have complex and distinct subunit structures. 20 years later, the laboratories of Sentinec and Young had purified the homologous yeast enzymes, enzymes and cloned the corresponding subunits. And those studies revealed that some subunits were common to the three RNA polymerases, some were completely distinct, and others were highly related to each other and to subunits in the bacterial RNA polymerase. So these results revealed a molecular basis for some common enzyme, enzymatic properties, as well as distinct specificities and regulation of the three enzymes. Given distinct enzyme structures and functions, the next task was to establish accurate transcription of specific genes by purified RNA polymerases for mechanistic analyses. These studies resulted in the identification of general initiation factors for specific transcription. Prior to 1979, incubation of purified polymerases 1, 2, 3 with corresponding purified genes resulted in no specific transcription. But in 1979, we showed that incubation of purified polymerases 2 or 3 with purified genes in the presence of a cellular extract resulted in specific transcription. In 1980, the subsequent chromatographic fractionation of this extract yielded two general initiation factors, 3B and 3C, as well as the gene-specific factor, 3A, for RNA polymerase 3. And in the case of POL2, they resulted in the identification of multiple factors that were later resolved into six independent factors called 2A, 2B, 2D, 2E, 2F, and 2H. By 1992, studies in my own and other labs indicated here had resulted in the complete purification of these factors and in the cloning and validation of the individual subunits. This slide shows some of the original data for accurate transcription initiation by purified POL2. Incubation of a DNA fragment containing the adenovirus major late promoter, shown here, with POL2 and with the extract led to the synthesis of a specific RNA transcript that indicated specific initiation at the natural initiation site. And this RNA was not seen when RNA polymerase II was inhibited with alpha lamantin or when the extract was omitted from the reaction. In later studies with the purified polymerase shown here, robust transcription of this same promoter was seen when all factors were present but was not seen with the omission of any single factor or the RNA polymerase, establishing their uh, clearly establishing their requirements for specific transcription initiation. An important point from these studies was that our results showed accurate but promiscuous transcription of the cell-specific adeno-2 and beta-globin promoters by the ubiquitous POL2 and general initiation factors. 
This led to the prediction and later discovery of a general repression mechanism, namely DNA assembly into chromatin, and gene and cell-specific transcriptional regulatory factors, activators, that reverse the repression. Having identified general initiation factors, the next task was to establish the mechanism involved in specific transcription initiation by the polymerase and these factors. The, uh, the data on the, the figure on the left shows our initial results on a POL2 uh, transcribed tRNA gene. Promoter recognition uh, was established by TF3C and TF3C in turn results in the stepwise recruitment of TF3B and POL3 resulting in the formation of a pre-initiation complex containing about 25 polypeptides. Similar results were obtained for a POL2 transcribed promoter. Our early studies showed an initial recognition of the promoter by the initiation factor TF2D. Subsequent studies by my laboratory and other laboratories indicated here showed the stepwise assembly of the remaining factors in the formation of a pre-initiation complex containing 44 polypeptides. Incubation of either of these pre-initiation complexes with nucleoside triphosphates resulted in specific transcription and transcription elongation. The next seminal event in this journey was the discovery of gene and cell-specific transcriptional activators. These were predicted based on precedent from bacterial studies and on the promiscuity of the general transcription machinery, necessitating some mechanism to achieve gene and cell-specific transcription. The first of these factors was the 5S gene-specific TF3A, purified in 1980 on the basis of a functional transcription assay shown to bind and activate the 5S RNA gene, and it was the prototype DNA binding transcriptional activator in eukaryotes. The panel on the left shows a transcription assay with purified POL3, 3B, and 3C, which result in the robust transcription of the control tRNA gene, but not 5S RNA gene. Robust transcription of the 5S gene is achieved in the presence of TF3A and these same factors as shown uh, in the panel. The center panel simply shows the electrophoretically resolved, highly purified TF3A, and the panel on the right shows promoter binding of TF3A by a DNA footprint assay. These studies in 1980 were followed by our subsequent cDNA cloning of TF3A, providing the first protein sequence of a transcription initiation factor, and leading Aaron Klug to deduce the zinc finger motif, which is the most common DNA binding motif in eukaryotic transcription factors. Mechanistically, we showed that TF3A binding to the promoter facilitates the subsequent recruitment of TF3C, which otherwise does not bind to this particular promoter, and TF3C in turn facilitates the stepwise recruitment of TF3B and POL3 as described for the tRNA gene. This represents the first defined mechanism of action for any gene-specific transcriptional activator in eukaryotes and is distinct from the prokaryotic mechanism in which activators directly bind the RNA polymerase. Subsequent studies in my own and other laboratories in the next four years led to the identification of four gene-specific activators for POL2 transcribed genes. And currently, we know there are about 1,600 of these gene-specific, cell-specific factors. They are typified by a DNA binding domain and a so-called activation domain. Many of these are master transcriptional regulators of cell fate and differentiation, as summarized in this slide. Weintraub in 1987 showed that MyoD 
could convert a fibroblast to a muscle cell. Yamanaka in 2006 showed that a fibroblast could be converted to a pluripotent stem cell by the expression of only four, uh, ectopic expression of only four other factors. These remarkable studies were recognized by the Kyoto Prize, the Nobel Prize, and others. These studies and other studies with master transcriptional regulators, some of which are shown here, emphasize both the physiological significance and the power of these transcription factors, their ability to change cell fate. Given their extreme biological significance, the next task was to establish the mechanism of action of gene and cell-specific activators. And the basic question here is, once this factor is bound to the promoter or enhancer site, how does it affect the formation and function of the pre-initiation complex on the target gene? Quite surprisingly, given the structural complexity of these entities, the activators fail to function with highly purified POL2 and initiation factors. Functional biochemical assays then identified essential co-activators in the early 1990s in several laboratories, some of which are summarized here. This introduces a group of cofactors that operate directly on the general transcription machinery. These include the TAF subunits of TF2D, which were described in Drosophila by the Tesian lab, and in human cells by the Rader and Burke labs. The 30 subunit mediator complex, probably the most important coactivator complex, was initially described in yeast based on genetic and biochemical assays by the Young and Kornberg labs and shown to interact directly with RNA polymerase II. It was first described in human cells by our laboratory on the basis of biochemical assays, uh, which also showed that a direct binding to transcriptional activators. Both of these groups of co-activators, the TAFs and the mediator, are generally required for activator function. We also identified OCA-B, a B-cell specific co-activator that is selective for the OCT1 and OCT2 bound genes in B-cells. And it is the first representative of an expanding class of cell and gene specific co-activators. The next slide shows more detail on the mediator mechanism, which basically acts as a bridge between diverse enhancer-bound activators and the basal transcription machinery. As we initially showed, liganded nuclear hormone receptors like TR and PPAR gamma interact with the mediator through the MED1 subunit with these detailed interactions shown here. So this direct interaction serves to recruit the mediator to activator-bound enhancers for subsequent interactions with the general transcription machinery at the promoters. Again, this model was based on biochemical assays. It was validated by a MED1 knockout in a mouse embryo fibroblast-based model of PPAR gamma-dependent adipogenesis as shown in the next slide. As shown originally in the Spiegelman lab, fibroblasts can be differentiated to adipocytes, fat cells, with inducing factors and the master regulator PPAR gamma. And those cells differentiated adipocytes with lipid droplets stained by all the red O are shown in this left panel. As shown in the right panel, the MED1 deficient MEFs fail to differentiate into adipocytes under these same conditions, and they further show impaired PPAR gamma target gene expression. So this analysis provided uh, a validation of the function and physiological relevance uh, of the mediator, and specifically uh, the MED1 subunit. Given their natural location within cells, we next analyzed transcriptional regulation in the context of chromatin. As you are aware, 
genomic DNA interacts with core histones to form nucleosomal structures, which both package DNA and, as you will see, serve to repress transcription. Remarkably, many laboratories showed that these histone tails uh, on the nucleosome can be acetylated, methylated, phosphorylated, ubiquitolated, ubiquitolated at very specific site by a diverse group of enzymes. This brings us to uh, a group of cofactors that act through modifications of the chromatin template. These include ATP-dependent chromatin remodeling factors and the histone modifying factors that, that give the modifications that I have described. These factors were discovered by other laboratories, but we were uh, basically interested in establishing a defined cell-free system to, to investigate the integrated functions of these cofactors for both biochemical, uh, for mechanistic studies. And the strategy, the general strategy is shown here, as I've already described. Incubation of a DNA template with POL2 and initiation factors results in promiscuous but active transcription. My laboratory and the laboratory of court laboratories of Kornberg and Luce showed that the assembly of this DNA into a chromatin structure with histones resulted in the repression of this promiscuous transcription activity. So basically this uh, establishes the general repression mechanism that had been predicted. These templates uh, in our assays are then utilized in conjunction with POL2 initiation factors, various activators, and various cofactors to establish mechanisms involved in the reactivation of the native repressed chromatin template. More detail for this protocol is shown here. A DNA template with activator sites and a core promoter is assembled into chromatin with bacterially expressed and purified histones according to the procedure of Jim Katanaga. This chromatin, which is shown here, a beads on a, str a, beads on a string structure, is then incubated with activators and with acetyl and methyl transferases to affect chromatin modifications. Those modified templates are then incubated with nuclear extract as a source of all of the other general transcription factors or with a purified POL2, initiation factors, coactivators, and elongation factors to provide a quite defined in vitro transcription system with chromatin template that contains in excess of 100 different polypeptides. Notably, the chromatin can be assembled with wild-type histones or with mutant histones that cannot be modified or with pre-modified histones. And this system has allowed us to establish causal effects of histone modifications and to establish direct effects and mechanisms of action of various coactivators. Some of these uh, results are summarized in this slide. In early studies, we analyzed the function of P300, histone 3H4 acetyl transferase in conjunction with two different arginine methyl transferases shown here, which affect those modifications. We later analyzed the function of P300 in conjunction with SET1 complex, a major lysyl histone methyl transferase that modifies lysine 4 uh, in the promoter regions. In general summary of these studies, they showed an ordered cooperative interactions and functions of coactivators in activator dependent transcription along with specific histone modifications. Perhaps most importantly, they established causal effects of histone modifications on transcription. This was indicated by the observation that mutations in the modified histone acet acetylation and methylation sites eliminated the cofactor functions. This observation was critical since we, in 1997, and later others, showed that histone modifying factors can also functionally modify many transcription factors. 
and the more common cell-based and genetic assays show only correlations of histone modifications with transcription and do not identify the essential substrates. So again, the studies were important for establishing the anticipated causal effects of histone modifications. This provides a general summary of these discoveries, which include general structurally and functionally distinct RNA polymerases, cognate general initiation factors, gene and cell-specific transcriptional activators, general and gene or cell-specific cofactors, mechanisms involved in the regulation of transcription through the use of biochemically defined systems with purified factors and recombinant DNA and chromatin templates, and a chromatin-based repression mechanism, as well as causal roles for histone modifications in transcription. The diagram gives you a visual uh, perception of the overall complexity of the factors and complexes required for the transcription of a simple single gene, requiring at least 100 or more distinct polypeptides dispersed among the various factors. These discoveries have been foundational for subsequent and future studies of the spectacular high-resolution X-ray cryo-EM studies of the transcriptional machineries, genomic analyses of gene activation mechanisms, cellular imaging studies of gene activation mechanisms, mechanisms underlying distal enhancer, promoter interactions and functions, and an emerging role of phase separation of biological condensates in gene activation, transcriptional regulatory circuits, and importantly, the molecular basis and the therapeutic manipulation of aberrant transcription factor functions and transcriptional regulatory circuits found in many human pathologies. In closing, I would like to acknowledge over 120 graduate and postdoctoral trainees who have contributed to this work, my undergraduate, graduate, and postdoctoral mentors, my many colleagues in the transcription field, and my family who have unfailingly supported my dedication to science. This shows three of my inspiring mentors in my early career development, my Wabash College professor Tom Cole, my PhD mentor Bill Rutter, and my postdoctoral mentor Donald Brown. This slide shows some of my extraordinary student and postdoctoral trainees on the occasion of my 70th birthday celebratory symposium in 2012 at the Rockefeller University. And lastly, I would again like to acknowledge the Enamori Foundation for this truly remarkable award. Thank you for your attention.